Good evening. Uh, welcome to my laboratory. Uh, I'm going to do another um, resonant frequency inductance determination of this uh, uh, standard monofiler pancake coil made up of uh, some number 27 magnet wire that I have uh, uh, twisted into 14 strand sort of Litz stuff uh, there and it has a DC resistance of uh, two-tenths of an ohm. So what I'm going to do is take that coil and I'm going to put it into a tank circuit with this capacitor which is nominally one microfarad but it actually measures on this, uh, this meter. It actually measures uh, <clears throat> 0.976 microfarad or 976 nanofarads and uh, let's might as well just check that to make sure you try this with one hand nine seventy seven this time and I've got it marked at uh, nine seventy six so that's uh, Close enough. I'm not going to remark it. We'll just call it 977 or 976 in the calculations. Okay, now let's, uh, since we're set up to measure and we don't have the tank circuit built yet, let's go ahead and measure this coil's inductance using the meter. So let's switch this to an inductance range. Okay, and then hook it up. I'm trying to do my eye-hand coordination by watching the monitor rather than looking at my actual hand, so uh, please forgive me if I seem a bit clumsy. Okay, and I have this coil mounted out hanging over, <coughs> over space. It's not actually uh, on a workbench or anything, it's just on this piece of wood. So it, we're reading uh, uh, 0 0.103 millihenries, so that's 103, 102 microhenries, right? 102, 103 microhenries is the measured inductance for this coil. Okay, now uh, I'm going to pause for a moment and set up to make the uh, resonant frequency determination by uh, soldering together these components here. This is a 62k ohm resistor that I'll use to attenuate the input from the function generator. We'll be using the Interstate uh, F43 function generator and the Tektronix 2213A oscilloscope uh, and the Philips PM6676 frequency counter to uh, do this determination. So stand by, let me set up, and I'll be back. Okay, now I've got the coil all hooked up into the tank circuit with that uh, capacitor that I measured earlier, parallel with the capacitor, and then the series attenuating 62K resistor to the output of the uh, function generator. And uh, then I have the oscilloscope probe, and the uh, frequency counter probes both hooked directly across the tank circuit at the capacitor there, like that. Okay, and over on the oscilloscope, the top trace is displaying the function generator's raw output taken from a, a T on the function generator right there, going up in that yellow cord to the directly to the channel one input. The baseline is indicated there, and we are at 5 volts per division, so we're putting out a 10 volt peak-to-peak -peak sine wave signal from the function generator. And what I'm going to do is switch to a square wave to show that the square wave comes out at the same amplitude as the sine wave. Okay. Same amplitude. 
as the sine wave. And the bottom trace is the trace that's coming from the scope probe that's hooked up across the tank circuit. And we're looking at that at uh, uh, 1x attenuation and uh, 20 millivolts per division on that. And right now you can see that the trace is very flat uh, because we're off the resonant frequency right now. The counter is uh, not even triggering because this signal is so flat. Alright, so now I'm going to sweep the function generator uh, to higher and higher frequencies, lower and lower frequencies, I mean, <laughs> and there you can see the sinusoidal output, or rather the response of the tank circuit give a peak voltage right there and that's because the impedance peaks and so the input more of the input power is actually uh, available to be read at the scope probe rather than going into oscillating the tank circuit and then as we get longer and longer in frequency we pass that now when I use a note the amplitude of the output here Okay, I got about one, two, about three full divisions of output. If I switch to the square wave excitation, you can see that the amplitude of the output goes up, but the frequency, I'm sweeping a little bit here, the frequency stays the same for the resonance. Okay, and let's see what that, let's go to, uh, back to the sine wave and let's try and get that resonant frequency just exactly tuned for the greatest amplitude which I think is going to be right about there whoops I bumped, bumped the knob with my fingers Okay. Find the greatest amplitude right up there. Now let's look at the frequency counter. And it's reporting 16.115 kilohertz or uh, 16,115 hertz. 16,116. Okay. So now let's go and put those numbers into the calculator. We're on the computer website, which is that one. And there's the formula. So let's see, solving for inductance, we want to put in an input of 16, what was it? 16, one. 16116. All right. One, six. I've already got the capacitance entered in there, so now we'll calculate. And uh, this is what we come up with 99.9 microhenries. And what did we measure it at? Uh, 102 microhenries, something like that. So, not too shabby. We have determined the resonant frequency of this tank circuit and the uh, inductance of this coil to within a couple of percent of the readings given by this commercial, cheap but still commercial and reasonably accurate when testing actual inductors, um, pros kit meter. Thank you for watching. Resonance determination of a coil using resonating a tank circuit and measuring the inductance comparing with a known capacitor.